we're getting close to the end of the day and I want to wrap up today's big idea which is these app assets and we've created the icons and we've added this little bit of code to the config file so that the splash screen shows up for 10 seconds which is not what we want at all. Notice you get a splash screen that lasts 10 seconds which is unrealistic. We will add code so the splash screen is removed once the Cordova APIs load. So what that means is we're loading up a web project inside of uh, a wrapper onto our device. So technically our device is a hybrid project. I've mentioned that before. This is a hybrid project. It's not made from native code. It's made from web code. But Taco converts that code into the appropriate thing. So it's sort of hybrid. And therefore, it needs to load the Cordova code, the APIs. It needs to load that and then we've got a nicely running project. So we're going to then add a little bit of code to our JavaScript file to say that as soon as Cordova is ready, the underlying code, navigator.splashscreen hide. Hide that splash screen. We don't need to show it for the whole 10 seconds. We only need it made for one second, as fast as we, as, as little time as we need. And some of you asked me this, and I'll mention it now, and also next time, let me show it to you here live. If if the, you saw the first time that I ran this, the splash screen loaded up. And if I go back to to run my my app again, so I've got my app down there, and if I tap it um, to load it, it's going to go directly there. It didn't show the splash screen again. Well, it doesn't show the splash screen a subsequent time because the app is still in memory. If I quit the app, then it won't be in memory anymore, and then it'll show the splash screen. So on this Android device, um, the icon of the little square down here loads up your recent apps. So if I tap that, here's my recent apps, and I'm going to swipe to close my template app. I've closed that app, it's no longer in memory. So now when I go back to all my apps, and then tap on the, tap on the template, project again. It wasn't in memory, so it has to load the splash screen again for the 10 seconds. So you have to force quit it. You have to quit the app, however you quit it on yours. Mine, you can quit on mine by tapping that little square, which brings up all your recent apps. Then when once I've quit it out of memory, then I run it and it shows the splash screen. So that's how I can further test it. I have to get it out of memory. And so we saw it's lasting for 10 seconds. I don't want that. Go back to your project. Back to your project. So back to your template project. Back up to... I was in the res folder. Back out all the way back to where you see config. And then actually then go into the WW folder. This is a little bit of JavaScript that we're going to add to the, the main project. Open WW, open scripts. Inside of index.js, I mean, uh, then you'll see index.js. Right click index.js and select edit with Notepad. We're going to go into detail about what all of this is doing next time once we finally bring in our project from last month into this project. We'll explain what all of this is. But basically, you will see a line that says number four, document.addEventListener. Previously, we've had document.getElementById. That was when we wanted to make you know a, a button happen or something last month. Here we've got an event listener. We're going to see these a lot. Event listeners uh, are, you know, things that happen in the app. We're waiting for an event. We're waiting for something to happen. One of the event listeners is pause. One is resume. When you've got your app loading or loaded, it's in the main memory, right? And then when I go to the home screen, it fired the pause event. My app sent the Android device 
a pause event. It's saying the app is paused. So then we can handle that with some code. If I go back into my app, it will, my app will tell the, the operating system, resume. So we can handle that. There are events that we listen to. The very first event, number four, is device ready. Um, once the Cordova code, the Cordova framework has loaded and processed, it will send, it will fire the event device ready. It'll send device ready to the operating system. And then we're saying here, we're waiting for an event, specifically device ready. Once device ready happens, we are going to run the function on device ready with some other stuff. On device ready is then defined right here. We talked briefly last month that there's a bunch of built-in JavaScript commands and we can invent our own. There's a command called on device ready that we invented that the that comes built into Cordova that was invented by the Cordova development team on device ready. And it is defined right here. Do this and this and this and this. That's how you're getting it to say device ready on screen. Device ready will not show up until my app tells the operating system device is ready. If it never gets to that point, it'll always say, you know, loading, loading project or whatever it says beforehand. So a lot of the code that we're going to write is going to exist inside of this on device ready function. We can't use the camera until Cordova is ready. We can't use the database until Cordova is ready. So we will usually be writing our code inside of this function. Give yourself a new line 7 and my handout says edit your app's JS file and add the following in the on device ready function navigator.splashscreen.hide so on that line, that new line 7, navigator dot splash screen dot hide. The navigator object, the whole app basically, it has a, that's the object. We've looked at log, uh, we looked at console.log, the console object. We had document.element by ID. Um, that was the object. We've got the object of navigator, specifically the splash screen element. Specifically hide the splash screen. Hide the splash screen when the device is ready. Don't wait 10 seconds. Hide that splash screen when we're ready to go. Save this JavaScript file. Go back to your command prompt and run it. You don't have to force quit it. It will do it for you. But that one line there now should hopefully, and I'm going to test it on mine, it will then no longer, it will no longer display the splash screen for 10 whole seconds. It should only display it for as long as necessary, which I think in such a basic project, it'll be like one second. So this next time should be faster. Did you just type? Taco run Android. And it knew there was changes, so it's rebuilding. That's right. So here we go. This time it only took 31 seconds. <coughs> Installing on device. Launching application. So we've got one. <laughs> So it only needed one second to load those APIs and then it, it ran. If yours is still running for 10 seconds, check your spelling, right? Check my handout. The spelling is navigator.splashscreen.hide and then parentheses. 
notice it's inside of the onDeviceReady function. If you put it elsewhere, you'll get weird results. This command should only run when the device is ready, onDeviceReady. OnDeviceReady is activated once the event of device ready is detected, uh, then it runs this. Just like we've got here. Once the, once the event of pause is detected, run the onPause function, which is defined here, which says nothing. And then when we come back to our app, pause happens when I exit my app right here, it just did pause. That's where I could take time to save my database data, let's say. And then I bring my app back. You know, I go back to my app. At that moment, resume fired. So then it would run on resume, and at the moment it does nothing, but I could make it do something else. So that's what I've got here. We add that code. We, we do taco run Android or taco emulate. Android or Taco Run Browser, although the splash screen doesn't really work on the browser. And doing run or emulate is shorthand for doing Taco Build. Remember that command. We don't do it that often, but Taco Build will look at all of our code and recompile it and everything. Build is automatically also part of run and emulate, so I usually skip it. Now notice the splash screen only shows as long as necessary. And if this should also be working on Taco Emulate Android, I'll let that go off in the background um, because it's going to take a while. I haven't set it up. This is the big idea that I wanted to talk about today: these app assets, uh, an icon, and a and a splash screen uh, for our template. Um, temp technically, if we were, if this were a real template, I wouldn't be adding specifically these icons to the generic template. But I wanted to show you this. Um, next time, when we come back, we will then import our project from last month into this skeleton of a project, and then we're going to start to look at updating it, updating it for. Um, for Android stuff. We didn't get a chance to get to the part last month where we asked for username. We're going to ask for the person to put in their name and then the app will customize. The app will take the person's name and put it throughout the app. And then of course many more things, camera, databases, all of that stuff. But we've taken about one and a half days, uh, I mean one and a half weeks, to set up the basics of this whole concept. What's Taco and Cordova and creating a project and doing build and all of that stuff. That's the basic foundation. And then we're creating this template to reuse over and over and over. When we come back next time, we're going to take that template uh, and simply we need to just copy it, rename it, and now we've got a new app. We're going to use that new app and then we'll actually focus on the MySDCE unofficial app. And we need to talk about updating the colors and adding the database and all of that stuff. But at this point, um, I just want to make sure it also works on the emulator. I'm sure it's worked for most of you there. And when we come back next time, we will I'll walk us through again setting up the devices quickly. And you'll need to do that every time you come in. Basically, without me telling you, after next, after this week, without me telling you, you're going to need to walk in and set yourself up. You're going to need to download your driver, make sure it works, or create a virtual a virtual device. And I'll do it. We'll do it again together on Thursday. But after that, you eventually need to have it done. I'm going to get started right away. I'm not going to bother creating it again. You need to know that by now. I've got it in the handouts, and I just talked through it. But did you see that the splash screen loaded up for a moment, cut out, and now we're on device ready. Yes. Could you put a, another one second delay or two second delay in the on device code to slow it down a little bit if you wanted to splash screen the last one? Yes, we can write some JavaScript to create a timer. Therefore, we can force some time. Um, that's no time for that to talk about it now. 
but uh, if you look up JavaScript timer, we can get some code for that and we can then force it to have an extra second. Now the reason we're not doing that is because we don't know. Right now it, it happened really fast because we've got a basic app. Once we get it more complex that it can access the camera or access a database and such, then by itself it will probably last a couple more seconds. Right now it just lasts as long as it needs. And there we go, we've got our project and um, my emulator loads it there. So next time we'll import our app and such. But any questions so far about everything that we've done today so far? Yes. Peter, when we do the run or the emulate, uh, it automatically loads the app. Now, on mine, it looks like the uh, Apollo Taco is also loaded. Is that from the Yes, um, you will still see the old version of Hello Taco because it's all about that package ID. As soon as you change that in the config file, as soon as you change this ID, it's a new app and it will keep the old Hello Taco. The old Hello Taco was ID io.cordova.hellotaco. So there's still an app on your device with the old Hello Taco, which you can delete. It doesn't take out that old one because this is a brand new app. And we will see that nuance in detail next time. But it's just simply changing that ID and you've got a new app. So on template, there's my template. Template app, there's the icon. Any other general questions at this point? Yes. Um. You just mentioned the database. What's the name of the database that uh, Android uses? In our case, we're going to use uh, a database, and you can start researching it here, called PouchDB. You can go to PouchDB.com. A database that synchronizes, JavaScript-based, flat database, so it's the modern NoSQL paradigm. Um, and it can be local, or it can be on a server, open source and free. <laughs> That's right. Question, guys, there in the corner? Question in the corner, guys? Question? Yeah, well, I couldn't get my to come up with the splash screen, so I was trying to figure out where I We'll do a little lab time in just a moment. Any other general questions? All right, so I'm going to save a copy of my work at this point into the network folder if you want a copy of mine which has the new icons and the JavaScript. Uh, I'm going to save it into the network folder. It has today's date. You'll have to wait about 60 seconds for it to transfer over. Just one moment. So that's what I'll be doing throughout the course. At the end of the day, I'll put a copy of mine because usually mine works and I'll put it into the, the folder. And you can get a copy of it, but you have to wait about 60 seconds. Question? Um, what, what file is it we should, we should save off onto our, our, our little um, drive? Here's how I've got mine, and here's how I recommend. On my flash drive, I've got a folder called apps. And my templates and my future apps will all be saved there. That's what I've got so far. I've got the template from last week and the template that I worked on today in the apps folder. I've also got a separate folder to put my other stuff. This current class stuff, that's where I'm putting in my syllabus and that's where I'm putting in my PSDs. Yeah. Well, no, what I was wondering, you said something about, you know, you've got to set up every time you come in. Mm -hmm. There was a file which you saved off onto uh, Depending on your device, it's driver. So when you went on, if you went online to search for the driver of your device, and you've got a Motorola one, so you don't have to do it because I've already set all these computers to this Motorola. I forgot to say that. Sorry. If you got the Moto E or the Moto G, any Moto device, Motorola. You don't need the driver. I've set it for all of these because I have a Motorola and I want it to work. <laughs> but if you've got a Samsung or an HTC or anything else, you need to get your driver. 
and that's what you're going to save to your flash drive. But Larry, you don't have to worry because I've got the motor set up already. Yes. What is the name of the file for, let's say, July 9th Samson? Sure. You have to go to the Samsung website and look up. I've got a Samsung S4. And you go to the Samsung website and get the driver for the Samsung S4. That's the file. That's what you're going to download and install on your computer to be able to run your Android device. I already save, it to save it to your flash drive so you don't have to download it again next time. Since we've got deep freezing, it'll forget. Except if you've got a Motorola. Yes? What's the name of the driver? I mean, what is the type of driver? Is I can't say. It's every... The, the driver of your device. Your, your S3 or your HTC X9, oh, whatever. So it's a generic driver that helps me. For your device. It's not generic. It's for your device. You have to go to the HTC website, whatever, and get the, U, get the USB driver for your device. Mm -hmm. And that's on a previous handout. Um, double check that. So that's it for the moment, everyone. We'll do a little bit of lab time. My work is in the folder now if you want a copy of it.